So we give thanks and praise. As we live this resurrection life in the new name of His Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I, bearing witness to the glory given to Christ as he now sits at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, being glorified on earth as he was in heaven. Being glorified on earth, having that new name of Revelation faith, which is proclaimed in Revelations chapter 3, verse 21. Yes, sir, we give thanks and praise, and we want to take part in our Rastafari yoga where we affirm and testify of an intimate union with the Almighty, along with the disciplines, the principles, and the practices that affirm that intimate union. Now, with our Rastafari yoga, we, we uphold and we keep the Torah. We appropriate it as our teacher, our guide in life, that we may appropriate these lessons and may be able to use them in our daily life. Now, we see in this fifth Torah portion, a lot of things going on for everybody who, who hasn't read. I pray that we all have. Um, we're introduced to a couple characters um, in this fifth Torah study portion. We have uh, Abraham. We have Sarah. We even have King David, and that's what I want to jump into. King David. King David is at the end of his years. Here we find in the book of First Kings, chapter one, verses one through thirty-one. We see here that King David had grown old, and although he was covered with blankets, he could not get warm. And this is something that really testifies of the occult equality that we have to be conscious of, being aware of our being. Remember, we are body, we are soul, and we are spirit. Now, that spirit that we have received, we receive by God, and that spirit is the light of men. That spirit enlightens us. That spirit strengthens us. That spirit is what Christ came and revealed in the flesh. That 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 individual consciousness of God, his his creative agent, that life. And it's that life that upholds the being of our soul and the being of our body. And keeps them co-equal. And this is our responsibility when we promote our health and we promote our being. We have to be conscious of our physical nature, our psychical nature, which is our mental nature, our emotions, our reasonings, our intellect. We have to be aware of our psychical nature and also be aware of our spiritual nature. And this spiritual nature we take from Christ as we seek to appropriate his moral character within us. That we may be receptive to the newness of life that we have received in his new name. From the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. So we see here with King David. David has become conscious of the end of his years. And become conscious of his cellular deterioration. Now with him being conscious of, our cellular, of his cellular deterioration. Seeking to provide for it. Shouldn't we in that same nature... While we do have the strength of our cellular composition, while we do have youth, while we do have strength, should we not provide for that cellular composition? Just as we see King David here providing for his lack thereof of cellular composition. And for instance, you know, when we metabolize foods, when we metabolize fats and carbohydrates and proteins, these things are broken down into a chemical called ATP, that enters into the cell and promotes as you would find when you touch the hood of your car after a long drive. It, it creates heat within the cell of, of, your, of your physical body. Now, it was the lack of this heat that King David had. And this is why King David was given a, as it says here, he was given a a, a, a young maiden, a young virgin, a young woman who was never married. Now, this was a, 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 a practice in the ancient world, a medical practice, a holistic practice for those who were in the end of their years and were witnessing cellular deterioration. They would prescribe to them a young maiden who would bring about liveliness, who would, who would help to rejuvenate, to bring about a little resurrection within the physical body. Yes, I. To bring about a little bit of resurrection within the physical body. And there's a lot of lessons that we can take from this as we bear witness to 
King David seeking a little bit of resurrection for his physical body. But how blessed are we to receive our resurrection, not according to our own works, but according to God's word, according to his truth, and according to the newness of life that we now have, as Christ has been glorified in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. So we take part in this revelation, this resurrection life, excuse me, we take part in this resurrection life. As we see King David seeking to provide for his cellular deterioration, we have to be conscious of our cellular activity as well. Not providing only for our cellular deterioration in our later years, but providing for our cellular composition on a daily basis. Living a high quality of health, living a high quality of character, living a high quality mental state. We need to have the, the, the total core quality of our being, being physical, mental, and spiritual. We need to we need to appropriate all that into our resurrection life, into the resurrection life that we have received, into that resurrection life that we have witnessed upon the throne of King David in the new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. We have bear witness to that resurrection life, a resurrection life that we now have to appropriate into our daily lives. And this is why we follow his majesty in the way in which we do. We seek to have that same Christian character. We seek to live that same healthy Christian lifestyle. We follow him as we keep a Christian vegetarian life, as we, as we take part in never bringing death within our physical body. And we do this as we follow him, as we follow his truth, as we be conscious of our cellular composition, being conscious of the way in which we are made, being conscious of the way in which our physical body breaks down proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to produce physical heat. We also need to be aware of our responsibility to take God's word within our soul to produce a psychical heat, to produce a, 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 a rejuvenation, a, a, a renewing of our mind with a newness of life. We need to receive that within our souls. So the same way in which the physical body takes in fats, proteins, and carbohydrates to produce heat, this is the same way in which our soul has to be receptive to God by taking part in trusting, adhering, and relying in his word to produce physical, psychical heat. That, 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 that newness of life that invigorates the soul, that strengthens one, that, that, that which blesses you with the fortitude to become uh, a willing testimony, to become an uh, uh, active, obedient believer in God's word. And this is what we testify of with our Rastafari yoga, being actively obedient to God's word, being actively receptive to the resurrection life that we now live from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. I pray all of the I at all times keep our women fescaduce, our Bible with us at all times. Maybe even something, you know, something small for a little studying or, or anything. Take a couple notes. But my prayer and my hope is that with us all truly having that Ruach Kadesh, that what Memphis could do, that, that Holy Spirit within us. My prayer is that the words of my mouth may be found to be acceptable in the sight of the Most High God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And if it's acceptable in his sight, I'm sure that the Holy Spirit operating within you will begin to etch those words upon the tablets of your heart. There'll be no need to take notes. There may be need to take notes on certain things that the intellect is not truly fully grasping, but my prayer is that the communing of the Holy Spirit strengthens us and builds us up and empowers us to, to take part in fulfilling God's word. Now, let's see if we can. I pray that we can turn to, um, let, you know, let's, let's turn to Daniel chapter 12. Let's go to Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, and it reads, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So we see here, this is the degradation of lacking, lacking that resurrection life. 
lacking that newness of life from the top of your head unto the soles of your feet. And this is what we find in these last days. As Daniel explains here, as he says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life. You see, some to everlasting life. Now, that's the resurrection life that we receive through the Holy Spirit as we confess, trust, adhere, and rely on our salvation in Christ. That's what we have received. That's what we have attained as we bear witness to the glorified Christ in his new name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I. We bear witness to this, to this everlasting life, this resurrection life, okay? So let me read on here in Daniel chapter 12. It says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise so shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So we see here, this is our call, brothers and sisters, as we have received that newness of life. We have to be those who are those considered the many to turn righteous to the star, to turn to turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So we have to take part in being co-creators. And that's the blessing as receiving God's word. We have been able not only to be receptive to the newness of life, not only have we been made citizens of his kingdom, we have been made co-creators with him that we may turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever so that we may take part in this in this word in this in this rejuvenation as we have witnessed the rejuvenation as Christ has been glorified in the new name of his imperial majesty Emperor Haile Selassie the first the sign and seal of that resurrection life and we're so happy to not be overcome by the philosophies the ideologies and the doctrines of these foreign nations of these foreign nations which keep them from witnessing the fulfillment of God's word upon the throne of King David in Ethiopia as Christ himself revealed God's God-given revelation that mankind may grow individually and collectively in the image of God so it's a blessing that we are able to receive this newness of life and it's a blessing that we are able to be co-creators and be considered his children and, and, and blessed that we may lead others to this power. Yes, I, that power, that, that, that true power of the Holy Trinity that is seated upon the thrones of our heart, just as it has been seated upon the throne of King David, being the sign and seal of this resurrection life that we lead and we live and we share with all. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. And it reads, And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his power. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. So we have witnessed him raise up the Lord, giving him a new name, giving him newness of life, declaring power, honor, glory, and majesty upon his name. So do we have the ability to be called up to his throne as we overcome the devil, as we overcome society, as we overcome our mortal nature, that mortal nature that David wrestled with as he sought the warmth of a young maiden to help rejuvenate his lack of cellular activity. We do not have to, to fall victim to our mortal being. We truly have witnessed and if we have true faith, only, only the faith the size of a mustard seed is required, brothers and sisters. Only the faith the size of a mustard seed. 